shape is one of the foundations of design. And that is something I consider to be an important topic. And many of you really actually understand it. And you know a lot more about it than what you think. Or many of you actually know a lot about it. It's just you don't think about it. Like, for example, I mess up on this a lot myself. In fact, I messed up on this thing over here. Because that should be a little bit more blank. You know, have to think about the empty space. But either way, shape is something that is very important. I say sort of like a foundation because it's sort of the foundation to get you started on the rest of your build. Because... You know, what goes on top of this is the color and the texture and everything else. And obviously, it's not completely finished. I mean, I did just did three quick examples of different shapes and how the shape affects your build and how it changes the style of your build. You know, this is a different style and this is a different style of, of land. And this is a, over here is a different style of land as well. So I just have three really quick examples. So not completely done. So don't don't judge it. <laughs> well, actually, you can judge it all you want. I don't care. But with shape, it is something that's very important to get that silhouette or this it, right because the silhouette is the first thing you see. So from back here, it needs you need to make sure that you get that silhouette to look right. And if this looks like what you want it to look like, then it's probably going to look good once you're done. Because if it looks good that far away, it's probably going to look good when you're done. And a good example of this is you can actually do that kind of technique, um, just like a really small version of like a piece of land. I mean, uh, oh, geez. This this kind of thing right here, I see a lot of people do, and I do it myself, is where you build a miniature version of what you want to build. So you just spam down some, some blocks, and then you can plan out what you're going to do by using like whole blocks and stuff like that. So, you know, you can do a few things like this and build yourself a little... Well, area. Oh, here we go. And you know, you sort of get an idea of what your of what you want your thing to look like. Now, I'm on Java currently on Builders Refuge, really amazing server. If any of you Xbox builders get a chance to come on Builders Refuge, I would recommend it. Very nice. I should I should have a link to their website in the description, and a few other links as well. But with, with the shape, you have to have your big, medium, and small shapes in order to get it to look really good. This is for anything, really. Any kind of thing you're making, there should be big, medium, small shapes. So the big shape is basically sort of like this. This has no small shapes. This is all big and medium shapes right here. So the entire thing, the entire thing is the big shape. And this is like a medium shape, and this is a medium shape, and this is a medium shape here. In fact, the only thing I think that would count as a small shape would be like a button. Like, that's the only thing in Minecraft that will fit. So, like, that could be a small shape. Or, you know, like this wooden button. That that could be a small shape. Yeah, that could be a small shape as well. And then up here, this basically only has big and medium shapes. I didn't really get a chance to do any small shapes. So, we have the big overall shape, which needs to look good. And we have the medium shapes that make it up. Like, that's medium shape, this medium shape, medium, medium shape, medium shape. Pretty much everything's made of, of medium shapes in this thing uh, currently. And this is sort of important to get that big shape right because the big shape, you know, that big shape is completely different to this one. And this is sort of like a silhouette almost. You know, if I go back far enough, let me load this in a little bit. Here we go. So from back here, all you really get is the silhouette, which is sort of this shape here. And you can actually get sort of multiple silhouettes in. So this is a silhouette. And this is a silhouette. And this is another silhouette. And you can sort of get or the big overall silhouette like this here. So we have this goes up there. And we have this silhouette. And if the silhouette looks good, then the entire thing is guaranteed to look, not guaranteed to look good, but for the most part, it's going to look good when you're done. Because this is sort of the foundation. You know, the color just adds to it. But if you get the, the big overall shape wrong, it's there's going to be some issues. People will notice because that is one of the first things you see. Because, you know, even if you try to cover it up with color or texture, um, it is possible. It's just, it's going to be off. Sort of like um, Sonic, which I'll have a link in the description to a YouTube channel that actually explains some of that. With, um, so, or like really any character, like Mario, for example. If you, like when you look at Mario, you can tell it's Mario just from the silhouette. Instantly, you know 
like that it's Mario just from the silhouette and that that kind of thing is really um important for whenever you're building something that's recognizable sort of like a mountain as well I mean it's sort of like that for mountain not as much as a, as a character a character you really need to make sure you get that that right but um for you know buildings it's also sort of the same and for terraforming it's also quite the same as well because if you get that silhouette to look good if this silhouette looks nice then the entire thing is going to look nice once you're done um same way with that little small thing over there that the small little thing right here in painting and drawing is called a thumbnail drawing or a thumbnail painting uh which in digital painting you know you it's basically making a painting so small of resolution that it forces you to think about the big overall shape and you can't even add any details because it's so small. Like this, you can't even add details. Like the, the farthest you could go is to use the texture of the blocks and use like these like these blocks right here, like a tripwire hook. But still, a tripwire hook's like a whole entire castle practically. So using so building something like this that's super small helps you get an idea of what you want it to look like. And it sort of helps you wireframe what you want to do. Like, it's like a pre-wireframe before you wireframe. And then, you know, for Xbox builders, you would have to wireframe all this out. But I'm on Java, as I said. So I just did some world edit. And I put down some stuff. Same way with this over here. But the shape of what you're doing is quite important. And let me see if I'm forgetting anything. Um, looks like I covered pretty much everything and in the description there's going to be a link to a video done by uh, Gleb Alexandro for the Blender conference I have no idea what year because I watched it a while ago and I'm trying to land on this thing one second there we go and it's a really good video about big medium and small shapes it's really for every kind of like any kind of like painting even or CG work or building in Minecraft and then I also have a video that I'll have in the description done on done by the Minecraft BuildCon YouTube channel for a live stream for the Minecraft building convention which I believe there's going to be one soon it's like every summer there's one I don't know when like July I don't know they haven't announced when it's going to be yet and I am trying to pay attention to when they post that but they still haven't posted it yet at least I don't think so unfortunate but Either way, um, well, depends on when you're seeing this video. If Just check. BuildCon's awesome, okay? No matter when you're watching this. If you're watching this in winter, just, you just have to wait patiently. You don't have to wait patiently. But BuildCon is quite awesome. And there's quite a few videos on the BuildCon YouTube channel that has a lot of really great information. The only thing is that they're very long. If you think my videos are long, those are an hour long videos. And they, yeah, they're very, very long. I would, I would still recommend watching them, though. They're very amazing and pretty much it um i'll just go over one go over this once again that, that the shape is sort of like it defines the style it get, heads it in the right direction it doesn't 100 percent define the style yeah oh there we go i remembered why i was about to forget so the shape of this sort of gets the style in the right direction, but it doesn't define 100% the style. It gets you in the right direction, as I said. And for example, I could put a modern house in here, right? And it would look a bit off. And, you know, it's going to be a bit weird seeing a modern house in the setting. But that's sort of like conceptual contrast. Conceptual contrast is for a different video. However, conceptual contrast is when you take two different ideas that don't necessarily fit and put them together and... It makes it very interesting because you don't expect it. You would not expect to see a modern house on this you know, in this area. You would not expect that. And it makes it interesting. And it adds detail and depth and interest to the painting or to the build or to the render or whatever you're doing. It really adds a lot to it. And, you know, you can do the same thing with this area. You know, to make it a bit more stereotypical, we could put, like, a Chinese house in here, which would make it feel a lot more atmospheric and make it feel, you know, be better for a role-play map, really, if you made something that really felt like it fit in this land, like it made sense. Because, you know, if it makes sense, it's going to make it feel like it's a it's a real place, and that would be better for role-play areas. And, you know, it really depends what you're doing. Um, but, yeah, you could use, like, conceptual conscious stuff like that. You could put a traditional house in here. A traditional house, you could even fit that in here. Even though it would be a little bit weird, and it's not expected, but that's the point. Because people don't expect it, it's going to make it, you know, seem more interesting. 
Um, same way with this over here. You know, it'd be a bit odd to see a traditional house just sitting on the top of this build, on top of this mountain right here. You know, it'd almost be like up, seeing, oh geez, there we go, lag. Seeing up on that mountain, you remember, not up, but the house from up, you know, on that mountain. You know, it sort of looked weird seeing it in a tropical rainforest, seeing that traditional house. You know, it sort of has like a conceptual contrast. And you could do the same thing with this, like with different stuff. Or you could put what's supposed to be on here, which would be more like a castle or something along those lines. And, you know, this over here, traditional house wouldn't fit in this area either. But, you know, you could put whatever you want in this area, but you sort of have to know what you're going to put in here so that you can plan the, t plan the terrain around what you're going to do. You know, you sort of have to have a general idea of what you want for your for your stuff. And, you know, it's just sort of keep some of this in mind. Now, obviously, some of the stuff uh, should be taken not as, like, 100% rules, but it's sort of like a guideline for, for building because, you know, it's not... Some of the stuff I mentioned is definitely true. However, it's not always something that you're going to want to do. Sort of like there's a, there's a rule about not having anything connect at one pixel areas, but you still have to use it whenever you're building trees because it gives a certain effect. So most of the stuff, you have to use it when you need it, if you know what I mean. Hopefully you do. And I really hope you learn something in this video. It should be a short video. <laughs> it's definitely short compared to what I normally do, but not short compared to what most people do, that's for sure. But I hope you have a great, wonderful, fantastic day, and God bless.